where do you meet new customers? How do you drive new clients? Like we have a little form when they use you can book me that gives us information that helps us before meeting someone. It's really like having an electronic secretary. You've done, and since you launched it, 1,588 bookings. Wow. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Thomas and Emily. I want to welcome you both to our latest customer showcase. We're really delighted to have you. If you could possibly just introduce yourself, Thomas and, and Emily, it'd be lovely to get to know who you guys are. Thank you, Bridget. Yeah, my name is Thomas McCarty. I'm an acupuncturist in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I'm using uh, You Can Book Me for our community acupuncture scheduling. Um, I've been an acupuncturist uh, since 2010 in Minnesota and moved back to New Orleans in 2018. And so I've been practicing acupuncture here since then. Our community acupuncture clinic opened up in early 2020 until pandemic happened. And then we've been doing it continuously since 2022. Uh, Emily Cronin, my friend and colleague, came on board to start forming People's Community Acupuncture Collective in October 2021. And she helped a lot with kind of developing how things were managed and especially was helpful with helping with the scheduling, you know. Excellent. Um, so i introduce Emily Cronin. Thank you, Thomas. Tell us a little bit more about your clinic, about the People's Collective. I love, I love the People's Community Acupuncture Collective. I love that. We administer acupuncture. We have a large room with several chairs where people can sit down and relax with the points. And there's a shared sense of the healing energy from being in a room that are all people who are all receiving the acupuncture therapy. It's set up so that a single therapist can manage if there's like little breaks or buffers in the schedule but for four sessions uh four appointments in an hour it can be a little bit hectic and so it's ideal to have two therapists what keeps you up at night what are you worried about what is the area of your running your business that worries you the most i'd say you know things things that don't come easily to me on one hand like marketing you know am i doing enough to reach out to the community um but then on individual situations, you end up feeling kind of invested in, in people's outcomes. And so you do think about who you're seeing the next day and trying to make a good plan for them going forward. There's, you know, there is some thinking ahead. So you've been running it for about four years. Is that right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if you could do it again, other than not doing it in the middle of a pandemic, what would you do differently? <laughs> if I had like uh, corresponded with people who are already doing the model first, it would have like uh, helped to kind of smooth out a lot of logistics of how to get things started. So recently, what have you learned or added to your business that's been a big game changer? What's helped you mm -hmm. recently that you've learned and implemented in your business? I think taking taking a opportunity of certain outreach events in the area, as I've met more and more people through doing work, getting word of outreach events like recently there was one it's called soul sundays and it's a monthly program to offer alternative health care to formerly incarcerated persons and one of my clients who was involved in that asked me to come out and participate in that you know so that's a very recent example of of that you know but seeking out opportunities to talk about chinese medicine because people have preconceptions and and i feel like the more people here a practitioner talking about the medicine and getting some sort of an idea of how it all works helps helps all of the acupuncturists in the area. I'm interested in what are the key tools that you rely on to run your business that you have recommended to use and then you would yourself recommend to use? Yeah, I think that You Can Book Me helped us a lot to grow the business and to put energy into other areas of business building. Like we have a little form when they use you can book me that gives us information that helps us before meeting someone that it's really like having an electronic secretary. And so, you know, we have more time to put into doing other business things using you can book me. I think that having a booking software is super important. And then QuickBooks is very helpful for keeping track of costs mm. and with doing the taxes. And just understanding, I think, the ins and outs of the business so that you know where you can strengthen the business or where you can have more, you know, spending with the business or where, you know, 
costs are going. It can just kind of let you finesse like the finer details of the business, which in the end is to provide a better service to the clients, but also mm -hmm. give us more time to see clients and recoup mm -hmm. from the day so we can come back to a fresh Absolutely. day. You were talking before about outreach and going to events to sort of meet new customers. Where do you meet new customers? How do you drive new clients? It's been word of mouth largely for the last year or so. I've had a lot of referrals from existing clients. I do paper flyering and then also um, social media, you know, Facebook with boosts. And I took a look at your bookings and you've done a lot. Do you, do you happen to know what your lifetime bookings are since you started? No idea. Do you want me to tell you? Sure. <laughs> You've done, and since you launched it, 1,588 bookings. Wow. It's a lot. <laughs> You're busy. But I also, I, just, right. I know, but I think like we should just take a moment as well to celebrate you, Thomas, because you're not just running a private clinic. You're actively wanting to help as many people as you can and to bring your practice to as many people and to care for them in a way that you've obviously shown you do. So 1,500 people is a lot of people you've been helping. <laughs> it's really incredible. Mm. Wow. Well, how do you feel about that? Because it's your it's your business as well as, um, as, well as uh, your, your grateful practice. Grateful and humbled. And I feel grateful to everyone who comes in. Because it's a, it's an incredible act of trust, you know. You you know, when when someone comes in for their first appointment, we will have talked for about ten minutes before I'm doing acupuncture on them, and that is just that that is an incredible trust, mm -hmm. and I, which I'm deeply honored every time. You know, a lot of returning clients keep in mind, but you know, still mm, a thousand still. a thousand times, who knows? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're going to move on to the final section of this interview, which is it's supposed to be quick fire. You can both answer. So Emily and Thomas, you either might think the same or you, you can disagree. This is a would you rather section. Would you rather throw out your phone or your laptop? My phone. Phone. Really? Do you kind of secretly hate your phone? Because the phone is this leash that you carry around with you. The laptop you know, I held off having a, a cell phone for a very long time until like the early 2000s. And then I held off having a smartphone until 2018 or 2019. Both um, of you'd like to be untethered. You'd like to be free. Yeah, you turn your phone off and it's just quiet. <laughs> it's pretty <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> Would you rather keep and maintain a relationship with an existing customer or get a new customer? I think maintain a relationship with an existing customer because that is how you curate the word of mouth if they're happy and they have that growing relationship. There's that. And also when people come in for multiple treatments, you know, it's, it's almost always the case that someone is coming in with an ingrained condition and those are never a single treatment. Mm. So to have someone come in for a succession of treatments is incredibly important for getting a successful outcome. Would you rather go and speak at a kind of a community of acupuncturists to be known for what you're doing? Or would you rather get a new client? Get a new client. <laughs> yeah. Would you rather work with a team of experts in your field or passionate learners? Oh, uh, other expert people. You know, when everyone's bringing into the situation what they do best, then you can just start seeing like how these techniques work ideally. And it really helps you build your own practice. I think that our answer is the same, but I think I would have said passionate learners um, because I feel like that speaks to the community acupuncture. We're all passionate in learning together rather than from a teacher who says this is how it is. Acupuncture is an art form in many ways. And so I feel like just the diversity of colleagues is beneficial if you're a passionate learner. Okay, my last question. Would you rather be known for product quality or customer service? Product quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Thomas has excellent customer service. Bedside manner. Yes, yeah. amazing <laughs> bedside manner. Anytime we have to handle something, he does it flawlessly, beautifully. Oh. So respectfully. <laughs> I can imagine. I do think that's the, at the heart of any business, which is that what are you doing for people and how do you treat them? And that's the service that they're paying for at the end of the day. I salute you both. Thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to hear more about how you run your businesses and how you interact with your customers and what you do. I'm sure many people will enjoy learning. Likewise, thank you so much for being on our show today. Thank you, Bridget. Bridget.